Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Um, I think you answered this, but Dan doesn't think so. What strategy is working now? I mean, so it's just basically selling vol. That's what's working, right? Yeah, the- selling is working at, the, at this very moment. Selling vol is, is working and, and has worked. Um, I mean, again, like I said, there's been some, there's been some blips, but overall, uh, you know, it, it, it's been a lot, the, the funds that have been selling volatility are doing very, very well. Okay, does that continue? You know, again, it's all about measuring their sharp ratio and measuring their drawdowns. It, these, a lot of these funds were also had a very difficult time in the fall and, and, and saw record drawdowns as well. So right now, the stands right now, selling vol is working. Um, it, there, there, are, there are pockets that have exhibited more volatility. I showed you a crude, charter, a crude oil chart earlier on. And, uh, again, some of the energy space, you know, can, can play as well. But, but overall, it's, it's more of a, of a negative or, or selling vega environment. Right. What software do you use? Is it just CQG, or do you use other ones also? Um, I use CQG. Um, I, I also um, have a couple of other platforms to trade on as well. Trading Technologies um, is where I execute the majority of my of my futures trades um, on, on their X Trader platform. I also have a use, use the Infinity Transact platform as well to trade. Um, IB Interactive Brokers has a good um, mm-hmm. platform to, to to measure a lot of option stuff on there and a lot of tools and services. So again. Um, I have a pretty, like, I'm looking at nine screens right now to give you guys a perspective. Eight flat panels and a laptop. And so, like, I, there's a lot of stuff that I take into account. Some is the short-term trading stuff I do. Others is the longer-term position stuff that I do, um, managing the options stuff and, and, and taking into account from there. But between CQG, um, TT, the, uh, the, the Interactive Brokers platform, which, which again, is, is a great value, and the Transact platform as well, um, it, it, I, I pretty much my base is covered. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, John, do you mind explaining how someone could replicate a covered call strategy using the ICFX options? Because we know there's no underlier. So, sure. You know, I mean, could you explain that bull call spread? I mean, it, that would pretty much work, you know, I guess a lot like a covered call, right? Right. It, it, it would. Eh, well, with a covered call, you still have your downside exposure. With the bull call spread, you wouldn't. Exactly. So, um, but, but basically, if I was going to effectuate um, – I got to spin these around now, okay? Um, I, I would, I can, you, you can either go long, you can go long the spot. Actually, you go you, since you'd be long the dollar, you'd go short the spot. So you would, you would sell. Let's see, you would buy the ICE FX. You would sell the ICE FX call, okay? And then you would get short the underlying Euro USD. Um, no, I'm, you got to answer that, Steve. My head is spinning right now, reversing the, the, those positions around. Well, what I'd rather do is just because it's so it's confusing for a lot of folks to just do the synthetic. I I I mean that's why I said just do the covered call. I know it's not a, it's not even a synthetic, but it gives you the effect of bringing some premium in. Sure. You do an in the money option, you sell an at the money or an out of the money option. You effectively have what I like to say is a covered call. You know, buy an in the money. Selling out of the money. Sure, sure. Uh, um, and but buying the money with Delta 99. The reason I say that, John, is that sometimes it's hard, you know, especially if somebody has limited funds and they can't cross margin right. the spot account with the options account. They can't do those trades that you do with synthetics. You know what sure, I mean? Sure, sure. No, that, that, that's a great point, Steve. And, and yeah, look, look for a Delta of 95 or 98 or 99. Right. Um, the ICE has was up on, on the website. They have a quote section there, which, which Steve can, can illustrate on. There's some fabulous tools on the ICEFX website. Um, find a delta of 99 or 96 or 95. Right. Um, go along that, like you said, and then and then you know sell the uh, sell, sell sell that against it. Uh, let me see, guys. If there you have any other questions, um, Firoz has a question about gamma. Could you please explain gamma shift? Sure. Um, the, the depending when let's say we're in a calendar spread, okay. Depending where that market goes, all right. When when we talk about gamma in options trading. The, when, you, when we say you're long gamma, it means the more the market goes up, the longer you become, the more the market goes down, the shorter you become. So if I'm in a straddle, per se, all right, and the market rallies, all right, I want the market to keep on rallying right now. So let's say an example, I'm, I'm, I'm in a straddle on the, year, the EUI. So I bought the 71 and a half calls and I bought the 71 and a half puts, all right. I want that son of a gun to, like, explode to 74, okay, or to dump to 66, all right, because if it stays at 71 and a half, 
I'm paying the ticker, all right? I'm paying rent, and I'm, that's not something I'm happy with. So when I say I'm long gamma, it means like the more it goes up, the more my, my, my gamma increases with that, or the more it goes down, that I'm benefiting from that. Conversely, when I'm short gamma, all right, um, the more the market goes up, the shorter I become, so I don't want it to go up anymore, or the more the market goes down, the longer I become, so I don't want it to go. I want it to stay in a range. So when you put on a calendar spread, all right, in this case where you're selling the front month and, 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 uh, and buying the back month, I want the market to kind of stay where it's at. And so depending where it's at, like let's just say the euro, the spot euro is at whatever, 138, okay? And I've sold the 138 um, calendar spread, all right? Or I've sold the Julys and I bought the Augs to, to hedge out. Or in this case, I, bought the Aug, I sold the Augs and bought the Seps to hedge out. Um, well, by doing that, if the market sells down to 134, okay, that, you know, that's, that gets outside the range I want to close at because those uh, – Yes, the front month calls would, would, uh, would expire worthless, but now all of a sudden the back month calls that I paid more money for are also falling at a rate that's faster than that. So there's a specified range I want to trade in. So because I don't want the market to go down any further than what it is, I actually become long gamma as that market has lower. Conversely, if the market goes higher, all right, um, that the, the short calls that I sold, all right, begin to pick up in value, all right? So and the, more, the more they pick up in value, I'm short gamma. I want them to kind of stay in that range. So when I say your, your, gamma, sh your, your gamma profile shifts, Depending on where the market goes, that's how much you become either long or short. Man, yeah, that's a good point, John. I mean, you've got to remember, and this is one thing that when I'm teaching options, I, I try to uh, just enlighten everyone that when we talk about delta neutral trade, I know John has given this presentation, it's almost, and I hope I'm not going to offend you, John, it's almost a misnomer because you're never really delta neutral because no. No. essentially it's always based on the assumptions that you put into your model, which are probably never right anyway. <laughs> I mean, you're as close as you can, right? But, you know, I could always argue that the vol is really 30 when it's 29 or 31. After the fact, you always know what the vol was. But when you're actually going through it, you don't know what the vol was. So Absolutely. you're probably a little bit long or a little bit short, and that's always the goal. It's, that's fine. You, you know, that's the idea of it. Try to be as close to neutral as possible. Uh, and that's what John's trying to say is that, you know what, you're going to get a shift. Uh, and that just means that these options are – all the Greeks are dynamic. They're changing, and the only time they stop changing is at expiration. That's it. You know, we either options worth zero or it's intrinsic value. Prior to that, we have the Greeks that are risk gauges that help you understand where prices should be. That doesn't mean they're going to be there, especially, as John was saying, when you get a big gap one way or another, um, you're going to get a shakeup, correct? Absolutely. Great, great job, Director of Education for ICE. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.